You were down there. Uh, give a little sense of the atmosphere at the open practice before we dig into some of the uh, substance of it. Well, the fans are ready for football. I mean, it's as simple as that. So the, the parking lots were, were pretty filled up. People tailgating, getting a little, they're getting warmed up for uh, what should be a, a pretty promising season here. And so they, the Eagles estimated 30,000 people were there. Was it actually 30,000? I'm not sure. But uh, certainly the ones that were there were excited about what they were seeing. A.J. Brown putting on a little bit of a show. Jalen Hurts with some highlights. And, uh, yeah, so it was, uh, it was a fun day down at the, at the link and just a little taste, a little appetizer before the real thing. Yeah, talk us through what you saw with the, the one play that's going all over social media of Jalen Hurts to A.J. Brown with some tight coverage. Yeah, well, it's more really of what we've seen throughout camp is, is that connection has been the uh, certainly the most prolific of any that we've seen. I mean, it's, it's Jalen Hurts to A.J. Brown all day, and that's especially since Devontae Smith went down with a groin injury a handful of practices ago. That ramped up even more, uh, and you can see the work that they've been putting in sort of paying off on that play. Jalen Hurts from 30 yards back. He floats back. He throws up a fade pass to A.J. Brown right along that right sideline. Bradbury has been very good this camp, tight in coverage. But A.J. Brown seemingly coming down with a one-handed, securing it, rolling it in. And, uh, yeah, so just one of the, the many highlights that that duo has put together. And uh, they got to do it in front of the fans last night. Got a question. I saw a lot on social media. You see a lot of Jalen Hurts scrambling last night. Uh, was that planned stuff or, or was that the defense is, is doing its job? Yeah. So I think that was, that was more planned. And also I think that it was, um, you know, it was a, it was a good reminder, Ricky, uh, because, you know, throughout this summer, Jalen hurts has been graded and, you know, he's, he's had everything analyzed this way and that uh, sometimes you have to remember that we're not seeing sort of the full complement of Jalen hurts. In other words, a lot of the way that he's being analyzed is in a, a pocket setting, uh, just as like a traditional passer, because that's the way that a lot of these uh, training camp practices are structured, is, is kind of timing offense. And last night was a reminder that you know, he's a lot more than that. Uh, you know, if, if he's going to be car- compared to some of like the traditional, uh, you know, accurate passers in the NFL, then, then yeah, he might fall short. But he obviously brings more to the table than that. You know, he led the league in – rushing attempts, rushing yards, and rushing touchdowns last year with 10 of them. And, and he was doing a bunch of that, to your point. Last night, he was, he was scrambling a lot. And he had the one move on Brandon Graham where he, you know, he stutter-stepped right, he cut left, and he just left BG sort of grasping for air on the edge there. And so it shows you that, okay, he's making strides in the passing game, and he also has this, this other skill set uh, where he's able to make runners uh, – tacklers miss uh, in the run game and those two things put together if he can if he can get the the passing part uh you know a notch or two higher then you know they've really got something here yes indeed uh, tim uh, another thing that went viral that a lot of people i mean millions of people saw was uh jordan davis in a one-on-one just i mean i i i, I know it's a one-on-one drill and you can't too, look too much into it but man that jordan davis thing just pushing the center back about a million yards Millions of people were talking, thousands of views, national people commenting on it. Uh, what have you been seeing from him uh, so far in training camp? And then what did you see? Did you happen to see that play that uh, went viral? Yes, and, and uh, it, it's nice that we had fans in the stands that were able to film. Kind of, we're only able to film like the first 10, 15 minutes of practice. But right. the fans, you know, they don't have any roles. So they got that footage going, and it, able, it enables us to kind of show you what we've been seeing over the course of the training camp, which is, you know, a huge man, uh, you know, six foot six, 340 pounds. He runs a four, seven forty. And, and normally when rookies come in, like they're not asserting themselves physically the way that Jordan Davis does. Usually what the learning curve is for like linemen in the NFL is they got to get, they got to get stronger. Uh, you know, they build up by year two, year three, and then they're really competing with the big boys, but you know, he's a big boy coming in. Um, and, you know, Cam Jurgens has had a really nice camp. That's the, the fellow rookie that he was going up against in that one-on-one drill. And in fact, you know, Jurgens kind of did his job by, by staying in front of him and that whole thing. But you could just see the sheer power of this guy where he's just able to, and another fellow large human being, and is able to just put him back on skates. Like that, that term, put a person on skates, that was meant for that rep. 
right? I mean, yeah. you could see that Jurgen just couldn't hold up uh, over that. And so, you know, the Eagles are really excited. Everything that Davis has shown so far is that he's going to be able to contribute right away. And you can see it like in Georgia, they didn't, they didn't use him as, um, as a pass rusher. They used him predominantly as like a, a two gap nose tackle and then use the rest of their talent to kind of come in and, and passing situations. But that doesn't mean that Jordan Davis can't rush the passer. I think that, you know, we're starting to see he obviously has the strength for it. He's got the speed for it, the athleticism for it. And so, you know, they're pretty psyched about what his future holds. I'm not worried much with the offensive line because of Jeff Stoutland, but what are your thoughts on how Isaac Sayamalu has looked going from left guard to right guard? They've been uh, talking talking him up pretty good, uh, and it seems like he, he's holding up pretty well, Hunter, in that transition. Lane Johnson's talked about the fact that you know they have that shared experience together, maybe not necessarily playing right next to each other, but playing in the same system on the on the same offensive front behind the same offensive line coach for a number of years. And that has really helped him with the acclimation process. So uh, I don't really hold much concern about Isaac Samalo in that right guard spot right now. I mean, obviously the, the main thing that they've been dealing with is injuries at the left tackle spot. And when you have Andre Dillard and Jordan Mailata going down and then Raven Clark wasn't available for this past practice. So they're going into their, like their, their fourth string, tackle and Awasika, not ideal. Uh, but, you know, the positive there is long-term outlook. It doesn't look like these injuries are going to be holding them out for the regular season or anything like that. And so the offensive line in front of Jalen Hurts should shore up by them. But, but yeah, I mean, you know, when you look at the Eagles offensive line relative to the rest of the league, and, and specifically here we're talking about interior offensive line, it, it stacks up pretty well. Hey, Tim, how about, how about some players that have been opening some eyes, not only as uh, possible backups, but special teams also? Yeah, so uh, let's go back to your boy, Britton Cubs. I knew you were going to bring him up. You love this I guy. Had, he was good again well, last night. Yeah, I know he was. Yeah, I mean, and, and one reason that I bring him up is because he was working with the first, like, he was the first guy out in punt return for another another practice like he's the first guy lining up when he he's catching everything like very cleanly he's he runs with purpose and Nick Sirianni was singing his practices uh his praises before practice yesterday so things like the way that I'm looking at it I I think he's gonna make the team uh you know I think he's gonna make the team and, and you brought up special teams and and sure certainly that would be kind of his primary contribution would be as a returner if in fact he does. I mean, if, if we continue going with the wide receivers, I don't know that he's going to make it, but Deion Kane is a, is a guy that I think at least has played himself onto the practice squad for this team, 6'2", 202 pounds out of, out of Clemson, and has had a nice enough, uh, nice enough moments, I think, over the course of camp where you say, all right, well, maybe he deserves a spot somewhere over here. Uh, on We go to the defensive backs, and I would tell you that Reed Blankenship, the uh, he's an undrafted rookie out of Middle Tennessee State, has had some some good moments. Whether that's enough for him to make the team or not, it is probably enough he'll climb to make it. Uh, but a fellow safety and by the name of Andre Chashri, safety out of San Jose State, uh, is someone who has consistently made plays enough to you, you wonder whether he's going to find himself a role on this team where it could be you know primarily special teams, and then if uh, an injury happens or two at the safety spot. Maybe he can get plugged in there. Tim, last thing, um, and we appreciate the time as usual. Um, game on Friday, you mentioned not a lot of guys playing, but is the safety spot in particular a spot where we maybe should be paying attention because they have but so many players, as you mentioned. You can't sit everybody. You mentioned that last week. Is that a spot where we might actually see, a position where we might actually see contributing players play on Friday? Yeah, I think so. And and regardless, I agree with you, Ty. I think it's a position of, of intrigue that people should absolutely be watching. I mean, because besides Marcus Epps and Anthony Harris, who have been looking like the projected starters at the safety spot, you know, that's certainly that's a work in progress and it would probably help for them to get some reps. So why not play them a little bit? And then Tart. Uh, he hasn't flashed a ton this summer, but, you know, he's a vet and he could end up with a somewhat important role here. So, yeah, you want to be watching him. You want to be watching Shashery. Uh, these are these are guys that you can kind of hone in on on these games. And, you know, it's, while uh, ultimately people get fatigued about the 
the preseason pretty quickly. You know, there are some important uh, battles to watch. There are some, I would say, between safety and wide receiver. Like, I'm going to be glued to those two spots to see who kind of shakes out.